Hello, everyone. Good evening, and how are you? Welcome back to the World Wide Web and the Internet, and welcome to the Chorus of Westerly's Wednesday Night Live Lecture Series. I'm Ryan Saunders, Executive Director of the Chorus of Westerly, and we are thrilled to have you back with us for another wild Wednesday of, of stories and learning and all sorts of wonderful things with personalities and friends of the Chorus of Westerly. Uh, I'm really uh, pleased to tell you tonight we have a wonderful guest in Sonia Tenglad, and helping me interview her tonight is none other than our relatively new, a couple about nine months in now, assistant conductor Catherine Aaron. Let's bring Catherine into the conversation with us right now. Hi, oh, everyone. How are you? I'm fantastic. Really looking forward to the conversation tonight. It should be a lot of fun. And I'm so glad that we get to do this together to talk with someone who is a, is a, is a friend of both of ours or, and, a, and a colleague in many ways. Um, it, should be, it should be quite a treat. Um, now, um, in, in the case with Sonia, Sonia's been singing with the chorus for uh, Tenglad with, for a number of years now, actually since the very first season of Andrew Howell's uh, tenure as music director. Oh. Uh, she came to sing the uh, Mozart Requiem with us and the Laudate Dominum from the Solemn Vespers in uh, May in 2013, and then came with us on a tour and did all sorts of fun stuff. How long and in what areas have you actually known Sonia? Well, gosh, um, we probably met um, in the summer of 2009 uh, mm -hmm. at the uh, Oregon Bach Festival. And um, oh. Sonia has been a long favorite with uh, that organization. And she always ended up doing some kind of um, chorus solo or um, doing something on a series and it's just a, a stunning instrument and not only that she's a great colleague she's Absolutely. just easy to work with and um, she just kind of knows everybody she makes you feel really comfortable so it's it's been really nice to know her over the years Abs I mean I think that's a great way to describe it I mean she's you, you're one of those people that you meet and you can instantly she finds ways to connect with you uh, but such 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 a wonderful human being. I mean, and, and an amazing, an amazing musician and vocalist. Um, I've also got a chance to know her through some some work with the Lorelei Ensemble, where there is such innovation happening in music. But with the, the the stuff that she has to do musically with her voice is just astounding, and 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 the flair of all of that. Before we bring her in here, I do want to say again, thank you to all for coming to us, and thank you to the Rhode Island State Council on the Arts for all their support of all of our Chorus of Westerly programming. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be able to do all this, and of course, without all of you. But now that we've done a little bit of an introduction to all of this, let's let's bring in our friend to the conversation. Let's bring in Sonia Tenglad, where, from wherever she might be. Hi, everybody. Hi. Oh my gosh, all those nice things said about me. I had the strongest Minnesotan urge to like hide. To hide? <laughs> hide, hide behind your screen there, right? I know. It's right Lutheran of you. <laughs> They're all true. It's so true. It's so. Oh, I was in Minnesota oh, yeah. for about six months, and it's the accent has really come back. But, well, I mean, you, I mean, I mean, what's the cross now between a Boston accent and a um, and a Minnesotan accent? Yeah, you'd think I'd be able to differentiate those and, and do them better, but I can't. Just the <laughs> Minnesotan. <laughs> well. Thank you so much for, for spending some time with us tonight. And I'm um, so happy to be here. I, I love you guys. I've missed you guys. So this is great. I, I do have to say that Sonia is in, in, a, in our sort of circle, one of our biggest champions, because there's many opportunities where I've seen Sonia in other forums pitch the chorus of Westerly or tell people that they have to find out about us, about us or uh, say we have to support. I mean, and, and not at times where we're looking either. I mean, from time to time, I hear like, "Well, you know, who was talking you up the the other day? It was it was Sonia Tangblad," and be like, mm -hmm. "So it's, thank you for that." It's so easy to do. I just love what you guys do and your history and what you're about. I, yeah, biggest fan. Well, we love. We, we are already getting already in the chat line. We're getting we're getting messages on the side, like from Pam Young, that they love you no matter what. So. You're, 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 look at this. Your, your groupies are already coming in on the, on the line. There. So we know the chat box is working. So why don't we, um, I, uh, Catherine and I know a, uh, quite a bit about you, but you've had uh, kind of an amazing life and a particularly amazing life in music that started really early on, including who your godparents are and things like that and your <laughs> own parents. Can you tell us a little bit about just you, you know your journey to where you are now? Sure. Um, I And you might hear my toddler, my three-year-old in the, in the background. Gosh, that was three years ago that I 
didn't end up going on the <laughs> last tour because I was pregnant with him. Um, but so you, you might hear train sounds and, and submarines I like in, trains. in the bath. So um, that's what that is, not just a drone. <laughs> we just kept a drone going in our apartment. Um, but no, so um, I guess I, I would um, say my mom was the one that got me started with with singing. She is one of the best mezzos I've heard. And she will just, oh, no, no, no. But she is, she's an incredible singer. Um, so I, I remember like one of the, one of my biggest memories of her was singing sweet, sweet little Jesus boy at the Easter vigil. Uh, it's totally imprinted on me. But so she, she, yeah, I grew up singing with her. And um, just because of who we knew, um, I, I met Anton Armstrong when I was about three years old and just grew up with him. So he was the mm. reason I went to St. Olaf College and um, got my degree in music ed there. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I would never want to be a professional singer. <laughs> <laughs> It's just funny what life does. Um, I got so I got my degree in music ed, and I'm very happy that I did that. And um, great teaching experiences. But then I just started singing with vocal lessons, and um, and then with Count Sprari, and I just realized I I loved it. You know, part of it. My dad was a Lutheran pastor. Yes, there's a lot mm. of Lutheran pastors in Minnesota, and um, I guess I always just grew up thinking, um, and I. I respected people so much who lived lives that were, you know, in service to others. And it took me a while to understand that you can be a performer and absolutely do that. It's not a, it's not a diva spotlight thing. It's, it's a true act of, of service and selflessness. Um, so once I discovered that and I knew I loved singing, that's, mm. I guess, how that started. It's amazing. That's amazing. Catherine, do you want to follow up? Um, absolutely. Um, so if you wouldn't mind going back to um, uh, Mr. Armstrong, could you speak a little bit about um, your experience at St. Olaf? Um, we have a lot of um, teenagers who might be thinking about yeah. their musical careers. And if you could just maybe talk about that program a little bit. Absolutely. I will plug two schools. St. Olaf College and Westerly College, or Westerly. Westerly, thank you. <laughs> Wellesley College, where I teach. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, St. Olaf was um, absolutely monumental in, in my life, and Dr. Armstrong in particular. Um, it's just incredible force, um, that man. <laughs> um, so kind and, and loving, and um, I mean, just breathed that that it, it's his life he gives his life to, to to students like me um and absolutely those are the memories i have from from college is his choir and the same thing will happen for all the youth in the chorus of westerly i mean oh my gosh the opportunity that those kids have is incredible so yeah. if you're looking to continue a tradition of you know, being around people that love it as much as you, St. Olaf is absolutely a great place to go. And so how did you find your way, you know, so I, I just, just for transparency's sake, uh, your husband, who is a percussion player and has yes. played with us on several occasions, yes. who we affectionately call the chorus vice president, <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you, two, you two both met at St. Olaf, right? We did. We don't like to say that because St. Olaf has a 95% marriage rate. Wow. Um, but we don't like being that statistic, but we are. Wow. So yeah, we met wow. there. Yeah. Wow. So how did you find your way to Boston? I, once I sort of realized that I really wanted to pursue singing, um, he's yeah. going to do his master's out here. I just followed him here and decided I wanted to pursue music out here as well. Um, I only got my undergrad degree. <laughs> this is the, what, like when Laurel I does panels for um, like at colleges or whatever. I always raise my hand and say I'm the one person without a master's. Um, so okay. it's totally okay. And you know, if you meet the right people who teach you the right things, um, you can go where you wanna go and do what you wanna do. But 
Um, yeah, so he did his master's at, at Boston Conservatory, and I came and started singing with Scott Jarrett at um, Marsh Chapel, and um, and yeah, met Catherine right before I moved out here, actually. That was- Oh, um, well. Emily Marvash was my roommate at Oregon Bach Festival. I remember that. I remember, mm -hmm. was she cutting your hair, or were you cutting- Possibly. <laughs> Someone, one of you was cutting the other's hair. And I remember thinking, wow, they've got a really special relationship. I think I would trust Marvash to cut my hair. Yeah, yeah. I would too. Um, but yeah, so that was right before we moved out here and um, met Emily. And, you know, she she was already so well connected here in Boston. So so you come to, Bo you come to Boston and you, um, so about, so I'm guessing this is what, 2006, seven ish? Uh, nine. Nine, nine, mm -hmm. 2009. Ooh, that's the first year I started with the chorus. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so then, so right about then you, you, I mean, you are very active with Handel and Haydn Society. You've been after Boston Baroque, but the Lorelei Ensemble was emerging right about that time with, with, with Beth Willer wow. and transparency sake, I just stepped off the board of the Lorelei Ensemble, not because they kicked me out, but my term was up. Um, and, I, you know, and I was one of the very first board members with Scott Jarrett um, mm -hmm. back when mm -hmm. Lorelei had just gotten its nonprofit status. So tell me about how you found your way into Lorelei Ensemble. Maybe quickly, what is the Lorelei Ensemble? Sure. So the Lorelei Ensemble is a, um, a nine voice professional women's um, ensemble. And um, Beth Willer created it basically because as a grad and doctoral student was not finding rep written for women. Like there just isn't a lot of it out there. We weren't allowed to sing the old stuff. Um, and there's just not a lot of great new stuff out there for women's ensemble. So she just wanted to fill a niche. So that's what she did. That's what we do. That was one of the first... Um, gigs I had out here um, was being a part of this amazing experiment that has led into 10 plus years. And thanks, Ryan, for all you, you know, did serving on the board. We are so lucky to have you. Oh, um, thank you for letting me. I mean, I, I, I mean, you talk about a group of what, what an amazing ensemble and, um, and what, uh, for all, and, and such, such such wonderful leadership with Beth, but also all of the all of the members. Uh, I mean, there's been some that have come and gone, going all the way back to the core members. Sure. Um, really, really inspiring stuff. So it's, it's been a, really, it was a privilege. Oh, and a total privilege to still be a part of it. It's been incredible being a part of it and just watching its progression and having such respect for any arts organization that starts, continues, and flourishes. It's just, and that's you know thanks to good vision and good leadership and but also the team you have around you so absolutely yeah absolutely um, um, i don't know if that answered your question about lorelei but <laughs> <laughs> no it did yeah. okay it did. Catherine? um so i'm gonna turn the clock toward um your first time with the chorus of westerly um what was your sort of first impression of the group? I mean, I know what mine was when I sort of dove in cold turkey, but um, you've worked with them for a number of years. And I'm wondering if what kind of struck you then is has held constant. Oh, well, um, just how much they quickly became, how much you quickly became a real musical family to me. Um, that's so rare. Uh, you know, not only do you have just incredible heart and soul with all of the singers that are part of it and the, and the rich history, but all the leadership, the staff, um, Ryan and Andrew, it's just that heart and soul is within every person who is a part of the organization. Um, and it just shows in the music making. Um, it's, yeah, I, I guess that's always, um, St. Olaf was such a musical family to me. And then you find these as you go. Um, they are rare. So when you find them, it's just, you kind of latch on, <laughs> which I guess I did. Well, Slam the feeling's down. mutual. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then walking into a rehearsal room when they're singing, it's so powerful, not only because there's so many, which is a huge testament to 
to the work that they do, but also just um, the heart and soul they sing with. And they're really good. Thank you. Really <laughs> good. So all those things struck me. I, I, I can totally relate. I think I cried my entire way through the Christmas Pops concert. Oh Even the gosh. cowboy care. I mean, just sob like a baby. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm so glad you like the Cowboy Carol. I mean, Andrew Howell really loved the Cowboy I love the Cowboy Carol, too. So we did it, Sonia, this year at Christmas. Uh, we, oh, this year. Last year. Whenever we last sang. Oh <laughs> I mean, a year that never ends. Well, it wasn't the last time we actually performed it. Like, it was Christmas Pops. But we did the the, the Malcolm Sargent, I think it was, Chris, uh, Cowboy Carol, which I think he wrote for the Boston Pops way back when. Or the or maybe the symphony before the Pops emerged out of it. But we uh, we did the cowboy and it was it's it's goofy, um, but every year at Christmas pop, Santa Claus comes to town and it's wonderful. I mean, we love Santa, and Santa always brings um, uh, Andrew Howell a present. And you know, for one of the shows, he brought him a nice big cowboy hat, and Andrew Howell looked amazing uh, conducting in his cowboy hat. And then for another one, of, there were three shows, but for the final show, uh, he um, he brought Andrew a, a fuzzy light up jacket uh that looked like and and, and i have to tell you, with the cowboy hat andrew howell had never looked better on 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 the, on the stage you don't have a picture of that do you no oh yeah i do but that, we, can, we can put that on another show okay. <laughs> i'll tune in um so um, we also got to oh go ahead yeah go no 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 you no, talk your show okay. no no i just wanted to say one thing that i didn't want to forget to say about what strikes me about the chorus of Westerly ended from the, the moment I, I entered the room. But um, just the whole intergenerational intergener thing is so powerful and you just don't find that, um, you know, many places at all. And just to see so many grandparents singing along their grandchildren, um, I just want to say to anyone out there who is, I, I also, um, used to be a staff singer at Trinity Church, like eight pro singers and the rest volunteer singers. And I just loved it. Mm -hmm. And being around people in their 60s, 60s 70s, 80s, um, who, and I taught a lot of them voice lessons too. And you know, I'd constantly hear like, I just want to quit. I'm just not like, uh. <laughs> and um, I just, every person who comes to me and says, that I just want to scream like don't do it if you still want to do it do it take voice lessons so you can always be your best singer like I'm still I will forever take voice lessons mm. but don't stop um your voice is beautiful just because of what you bring to it and I just I think yeah singing singing an environment like that is so powerful I, I have to say that um so you came first to see us uh, sing with us with Emily Marvosh. And I actually think, uh, Dave, there's a picture we have of, of Sonia and a Emily Marvosh together in, in your picture somewhere. If you can bring it up in a minute here. Well, here's <laughs> another picture. That's not the picture I was going for. So you, many pictures of Emily Marvosh. <laughs> that, there's one. There's Emily Marvosh and Sonia. I don't know. This is in Smetna Hall. Uh, Emily looks like she's studying her score. Sonia looks like. Oh, she's looking up. I'm looking for a high note. So you are looking for it. I really like that one. There's a there. I like that. Oh, with, with Dan Weeks and uh, in Vienna there. So oh. you came and um, you came and sang with us for Mozart and uh, with 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 Emily and uh, we had, we we heard a lot about you and you were referred to us uh, and we studied up, but we didn't really know what we were getting walking in the door. And frankly, it was the end of Andrew's first season, so we were sort of finding our way around a little bit too. But we had decided to go on this tour and and we didn't even figure out like what you know we just sort of said we're going to do Dvorak we didn't really even know if you we didn't really know much about you but after you were there for a rehearsal like that first rehearsal night on a Friday Andrew and I already had our minds made up you two were coming with us like that was happening it was one like, of my favorite gig moments if you'd ever call it you know I hate that term but one of my favorite gig moments of all time was when you and Andrew came into, well, that sounds bad, knocked in our dressing room <laughs> and said, you know, we're, we're doing this tour. Do you guys want to come with? Um, yes. 
<laughs> definitely. We definitely had one of those moments where you closed the door and we were. So. Oh no, we just, we just, I mean, we were just waiting. Like, we got to do this. We've got to do this. Like, like let's, where, is it, it's, it's almost like, you know, when you, 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 do I text them back? Do I give them a call back? Or is this too soon? Or do, should we wait like two weeks and be cool about it? And be like, you no, know, because now I have to call you out. So, um, so you agreed to come on the tour with us and to sing Dvorak and that piece of music, the, the Stabat Mater is just stunningly powerful, right? There it is. Look at that. Oh, uh... God, it, it is just, it is just, it is so unbelievably beautiful. And, 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 and your role in it was just, just phenomenal. Mm. But I, this is, this is my funny Sonia story. And, and, and this comes to our fancy prawns there, Sonia. <laughs> um, Sonia was, so Sonia and Emily are, are, are wonderful. You guys have been friends for a long while and we love working with you. We love having you together. But we also have a, like having a lot of the other Laura, Laura ladies come down. We've had several. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, and and Emily, at least back then, and I, I, I everyone's younger, right? We're new at this. Uh, Emily is always very. I, I, there's there it's on. Like that's the picture. I mean, look at that, huh? There you go. That's outside of the Steppen Zone in Vienna. Yes. Emily, when we get when we get arrangements worked out, Emily usually has a contract back to me in thirty two seconds flat, and is already gone. <laughs> I mean, boom, done. I mean, and 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 she, I mean, it's it's amazing, but. Sonia, you and I, I think we actually work well together. And it was sort of like, yeah, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll show up. Don't worry. We're booking the plane tickets. And and we had you all under agreement, but you never sent it back to me. And you kept saying, you actually kept saying to me, like, well, I'm getting on the airplane. I'm like, all right, well, I guess that's fine. And we did a tour. We did a tour around Prague. And you and I were in the same group walking around. And we got to the astronomical clock. In, in the square there, right? And you went into your bag to get your camera and I peeked in your bag and there was your contract. You're like, oh, you might want this. I totally forgot about that. And this is where the fancy prawns came from. You said, well, I was holding out for my fancy prawns, which has been a running gap. That's been the joke ever since. It's ever been, since. It's liner in every one of my contracts. Yep. That's, that's, so we go to camp and we had, we had, I went to, I was at Ogans one year and, and uh, we were, I was texting you with something and I had a, a mug of fancy prawns or Jonathan mm -hmm. showed, you had served fancy prawns recently. Or I got a picture yes. of it. We so, this is fancy fancy so I wanted to send you tonight. I wanted to like DoorDash you or something fancy prawns, but I couldn't figure out how to do that. And I thought, well, you know, I don't know if there's allergies in the house or something like that. So I, I, I want to, can you, can you call up that, that cartoon graphic for me, Dave? All right. This, my friend, is the oh. logo of the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. You can take that off the screen now. They are the double A baseball team of the Miami Marlins. They're owned by Wheaton College graduate Ken Babby. And uh, I love baseball and I love music. And I like to share things that I love with people. So your gift of being on the show is I have, uh, at sending your house will be there in about a day or so are three uh, Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp hats uh, for you, one including a kid's size one for your son, uh, for you to enjoy at any point in time. If you're ever in Jacksonville, uh, please let me know and we'll make sure we get you some tickets down to see the Jumbo Shrimp. So we, That is amazing on so many levels. Also because we just said yesterday, Soren needs a new hat because he's outgrown his. You wow. got one of the Jumbo Shrimp logo showing up in, in just a few That's days. That's incredible. <laughs> Ryan My Saunders gift. always follows through with his side of the contract. That's right. It's, it, took me, it took me years to get those fancy prawns, but I finally got the fancy prawns. Just for prawn. the record, I think that's the worst, the latest I've ever gotten a contract in. Just I, I didn't care. If, if I mean, I, I knew it. Well, here's the thing. How, how are you not coming to Prague? I mean, I knew the minute we booked the airline tickets, you were on right, the way. Totally. So. It, it's true. I didn't mean to embarrass you with that, but that's still my favorite. Just seeing I that in your bag made me that. laugh because I also realized I never got it at that point in time. Like, <laughs> I guess I have a soprano now for tomorrow night. Oh my god! I would have looked good that's singing awesome. up there, but I don't think the audience would have liked it. That's awesome. Well, all right. Well, I'm gonna pass this. Um, I'm gonna pass this back over to Catherine here. Go ahead, Catherine. Okay. All right. Well, should should we get serious? Yeah, let's get a little serious. All right. Prawns. That's a perfect segue. That's great. <laughs> right. All right. We we've kept it light. Um. Let let's let's talk about considering Matthew Shepard. Um. I just want to 
Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I've got some Kleenex ready. It's, it's, yeah. Let's, let's just start off easy. Um, can you think about um, when you learned um, about Matthew Shepard uh, and the, the tragedy surrounding his death um, or maybe your process becoming aware of that, that story? Yeah, it was uh, 1998 and I was in eighth grade. So I guess I just, you know, I, I, it was one of, it's, it's actually funny. I never thought about it before just now, but one of those moments in life where you are sort of awakened by how cruel people can be. Um, and it's so funny because I had the exact same realization 20 years later, actually to the day when we, when we sang it, um, in Laramie for the exact 20, 20th anniversary of his Oof. murder. And so it was just, um, I'm just making that parallel now of how, yeah, just a real moment of, of learning and realization. Um, the second time was far more visceral, um, for many reasons, but yeah. Um, as an eighth grader, you, I don't know, you can only take so much in, but I definitely remember it. It was a, it was a different time for receiving information, even like from across yeah. the, the country. And I, I can remember I was, I was in college at this time, just like my first year. And, um, it was in the peripheral. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I was aware of it, but I, I didn't really understand it. Um, or the severity. And I do recall very clearly all of a sudden people were gathering in parks all over the place. I was living in Baltimore at the time and, um, you know, lit candles and people just being together. It was just, and once you've kind of got the details and we're in a, an adult place where you could understand it, it's, it's just so shocking. Um, uh, so, You've you've been a part of this this work from the beginning, and um, I'm just wondering if you can kind of give your impressions of of going through that process and and you know a lot of us have read the liner notes and you know I, I some of us saw Craig Hella Johnson give a presentation with our our tour company and it, it's kind of like going to church. He's such a a spiritual person, but a pan spiritual person. It's 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 really impressive. And um, I, I wonder if you can bring us into that space where he invites everyone. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I guess just a couple thoughts come to mind. Um, I, well, the first time I was even in the same room as him um, was when I, <laughs> if I'm getting my timeline right, um, I guess I w I'm not sure which came before, but I'll talk about this one. Um, when I auditioned for him, I was chaperoning a trip um, that the high school I was teaching at with, um, the high school I was teaching at was going to do a sort of side-by-side -side thing with Conspiray, and so I was chaperoning, and the um, conductor of the, the high school program was actually best friends with him from St. Olaf College. Oh. There, and there you go. So, and I was just starting to sing with vocal essence, and she's like, you know, you, you should sing for Craig. And so we walk in the room, and they're singing the Eliza Gilkison Requiem. Um, and I just, very few times in my life have I felt a palpable energy. Um, I just had to sit down um, wow. because it felt so heavy in a really good way but just so palpable. Um, and I just had to sit down and take it all in. What is this energy? Um, <clears throat> and I mean, that just continues <laughs> every interaction I, I get to have with, with Craig and just the community he fosters. Um, but yeah, I have been um, lucky enough to be a part of, to have been a part of this since the beginning when uh, we workshopped it um, in 2014, 2012, 14. 
when it was just, you know, a few pieces, he was starting to put it together. Um, and those first rehearsals, um, I, I will never forget them either because we just had to have a lot of quiet time just mm. sitting in the room. Um, Craig, and you know, he's come out really publicly about his life as a gay man. And so I'm not saying anything he hasn't said publicly on the radio or anything, but he's had a, a really um, difficult journey um, just with being a gay man in the world. And for him to bring this piece to life, it was just, um, I mean, I have all the respect and admiration in the world for him. Um, just what he put himself through to do this piece, to create it. And I'm sure part of it was, you know, cathartic for him, yeah. but um, just living with that pain constantly while you're producing this. And I know there's so many layers. He would, he would say, I know that there was joy and healing and, um, but at some moments in rehearsal, um, he would try and tell us something um, and just couldn't. And we would all just sit there and just cry the, the words we had sung, the stories he had told us just based on his own life and kind of what it meant for a given piece or whatever. Um, it was a lot of just sitting there together, yeah. not even singing. Um, so, yeah, it it's really been, um, I mean, being a part of the piece, if I, I'll just jump to that, um, uh, to the premiere and then performances after that, it's absolutely changed my life. It made me do a total 180, um, particularly the concerts in Laramie um, over the 20th anniversary. Um, <clears throat> Just because we were there, and again, talk about palpable, um, Russell and Aaron, I think both, um, uh, Russell Anderson and Aaron McKinney, his um, killers, were two miles down the road um, in the prison. So just knowing that they were there. And then just seeing like the landscape, you sing, you sing about the landscape in the piece and that struck me in a way I wasn't prepared for. Just the sky is so different there. The landscape is so incredible. And just, you know, we sing about what he looked at that night. Um, and and the, year, the year before that, I had just become a mom. Um, so he was, he, he was a year old, Soren. Um, <clears throat> and so just so many things now doing this piece that I had already done before, but in the lens of, as, as a parent, um, walking the streets where he went, seeing, you know, University of Wyoming, um, meeting his friends and activists. Um, and the one man who, really changed my life. Dennis and Judy are amazing, his parents, but the one man who really changed my life was the sheriff. Now I'm forgetting his name. It'll come to me, but he led um, a, a panel discussion about just leading that investigation. And he had always, uh, he just was so honest with his journey and himself saying that he was a homophobic man all of his life. Um, he said the F word rolled off my tongue to my kids just as much as I love you did. Um, and just how open he was about that. And then expressing how leading the case completely changed his life. So he, he hires, um, gay people on his force now. Um, and I guess it just sort of made me realize that um being public about your your shortcomings is actually only powerful because it invites other people into that arena um and so that message of like <laughs> be honest you don't always know everything um and then listening on the same panel to all of his friends who had since become activists it just hit me over the head like Sonia you have got to do something 
it doesn't matter what it is, but like there's so much, there's so much good in the world, but there's so much crap in the world. And just, um, yeah, so it, I just left. <laughs> I, I missed my flight home and, uh, f from that uh, gig and it was actually a really good thing. I just bawled my eyes out in the bathroom for like three hours um, just sobs because you can't do that when you perform, you know, you got to hold it together. Sure. So I had to let it out and I wrote the entire way home. Like, what am I going to do? So I, I ultimately decided that, um, I was going to, I just had to do something for my son, you know, like I don't want him growing up in this world like this. And so I just decided to go after climate change because that's going to affect every single person on this earth um and the more i learned about it and the injustices surrounding that um that's what i that changed my life i i uh, started and run a mothers up front team in east boston um i just got off a call today with my city councilor and i talked to my state rep you know call each other <laughs> um like my team is um, a, a part of a team that's writing um, air quality mitigation legislation now with with this with the state rep and um, just dir a direction I didn't think my life would ever take or go in and it's absolutely because of being a part of this piece just you know if we all do something it doesn't matter how big it is or what it is but if we're all just actively doing something, um, I think it can lead somewhere. That's really that beautiful. Was a long no, that was great. Thing. It was beautiful. Thank you for but, taking yeah. into that us into that really special place. It, it's, great. It, it's, it's also amazing on um, well first before we go further, if you're if you're watching this in the comments, in the comments of this on, on the YouTube right now or, or wherever it is, left, right, below, there's two links and one is to Conspirare's YouTube channel themselves. Uh, and it's there's sort of a seven minute sort of highlight show, if you will, about that. And then there's also um, a PBS video special uh, that's about 56, 57 minutes long, completely worth your time to get a, a full backstory on this work and how it all came together. But Sonia, the, the way you tell that story, it, when you're talking about the piece, it's it, it's you know we were talking about we were talking about the tour before and the Dvorak Stava Mater, and there was a lot of stuff in Dvorak's life that he brought out through that music of dealing with his own healing and things happening in his own world. And you think about some of the greatest pieces of music, they've come out of tragedy or sadness or pain and they've been meant, and, and I, I, I'm not a composer, but you want to look in the mind of a composer and say, it's, it's yes, it's cathartic, but it, it's also a way to inspire other people to find goodness in their life or something that inspires them to do something else. So in many ways, your journey with this piece through music and then into, you know, meeting all these people, getting all this, and then changing it into activism for your own community and your own son. It's, you see how this all, you see how everything is interconnected. Absolutely. And, and music is serves as sort of our gift of the way that we can do it. it mm -hmm. That's just such a beautiful story. And I should say for some of the stuff you're doing with Mothers Out Front uh, and Beyond Artists, which you've established with a lot of sure, yeah. your uh, singers mm -hmm. who uh, advocate for causes and donate a portion of fees. Um, Sonia has been making huge, I, I am a resident of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and I can tell you that she's been making huge inroads um, in the city and with the state legislator. We see her, I see her on the TV and, in, and even in the, you know, I see her around a lot, which is, but it's, but you really, you're, you're, it's, that's an amazing story. It's almost like you missed your flight and then your mind went, it's, it's like things, it's, yeah. it's really amazing. Oh yeah. And, um, yeah, and, and I've told Craig a million times, like, this is all because of you. Um, and yeah, I just, too, if anyone's out there thinking, I, I can't, you know, I like testified at the state house and I sang during my testimony because singing is more powerful than words. Oh. Um, <laughs> but if, if anyone's out there thinking, I don't know enough, I don't have enough experience, um, it doesn't matter because if you, really believe something in your heart that's what's that's what people are going to listen to um and so 
just try it. Mm. Just try it. I've made so many mistakes and I've learned so much, but I'm not getting paid for it, so it doesn't matter. And <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I owe a lot to to this piece for sure. There is there is also um, looking at some of the videos and, and and watching this over time, and I, it's been fascinating to kind of watch your involvement. But there, as uh, it was already pointed out to me today, and I noticed it. There, there have been other uh, members of the Conspirare Ensemble. Who are all it's a professional, fully paid chorus, and there are very few. There's a shot of them right there. Mm -hmm. But I mean, just looking at that, I see Dan Cokewell in there yeah. and Sean Burton, and I mean, yes. there's there's a, there's a bunch of chorus of Westerly. Uh, soloists yeah. in there yeah um but it, that what is that like to being able to do such an important piece of music but being with such i mean all of you in that shot and do this you're all accomplished you know uh, vocalists on your own but what is it like to come together as professionals to do something like this well first i have to say you know beauty is so important in and of itself um and Chorus of Westerly demonstrates that every time. Um, I have to say too that sometimes when you get to be a part of a piece that's saying something very specific and has a specific action, um, uh, that can feel really gratifying. So just um, so that it, that's that part of it. I think we all just loved being a part of this and, and getting to be a part of it just because that doesn't always <laughs> happen, which is kind of how Beyond Artists happened because it was, I did Matthew Shepard and then immediately following, I did a gig that I didn't feel was saying anything. And so it was that, that juxtaposition of like, oh, there's so much we have to talk about. And yes, beauty is important in and of itself. And when you also want to say something else, um, Beyond Artists is, is a way for artists to do that. Um, so that's sort of how, how that all started. Um, but anyway, um, the, the trust that we all had, had to have um, <laughs> to do this piece was remarkable. Um, it I mean, just talking about like having to hold yourself together to, I can't, um, that was one of the hardest parts is just having to keep it all in till not keep it all in. Of course you give some of that to your audience, but if you give it all to them, you're not gonna be able to sing. Um, and so just to have that trust with people on stage and at certain points, um, some people were really having a rough time, a rough mm -hmm. performance that hit them hard. You got to step in and, and, you know, give a little more, um, so that was a really profound experience because a piece like that calls for that more than others might. And I experienced that, oh my gosh, the, that final chorus of the Dvorak, because that would hit people at different times oh, every night too. And yeah, sometimes yeah. You just, you're just done and the next person next to you has to take over. So there was a lot of that. <laughs> a lot it's of that. It's an emotionally demanding piece, but it's also technically demanding. It just covers such a wide range of vocal techniques. Mm -hmm. You know, there's chant, there's yodeling, there's um, country R and B, gospel um, praise, yeah. conscious <laughs> firmus. Yeah, it's just it's just layers and layers Gospel. of yeah. And that's just because Craig. I mean, his whole thing is you need to speak to everyone in the room. And so his a way of doing that for him is through all these styles of music so that you can grab anyone in the room through something. Um, so, yeah. It's really, it's really, it's, um, and Dave, we have a picture of Sonia with Craig, I think somewhere in your files there too. Mm. Um, that I, my, there, there he is right oh. there. Um, I mean, it's a really, it's a really genius work. I mean, it's it, it so really genius. It's, 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 and it's just the whole, I, I think too, you know, the whole, um, it, there's so many, you know, I think about vocal music and choruses and choirs and we can, if we said, you know, like what's the best orchestra in, 
the world or the U.S., we could, we, we, the three of us, and maybe even the common person, could rip off a couple names quickly. If we ask people what's the best choir or chorus in the world, it would be harder. We could do that because it's mm-hmm. our group. Mm-hmm. But I think it's so important to have groups like Consperare and like Lorelei, you know, co- commissioning new works, pushing the envelope in ways that we are to, to bring us to that level of uncomfortableness, um, so that the folks like us at the chorus of Westerly can look to see like. This is what we strive for. You know, like we need to keep moving beyond. Singing Mozart and Dvorak is important, but where do we go beyond that? And I think, so the chorus, we did not sing, the, we have not sung the entire history of Matthew Shepard, but we had the opportunity and Pam Young put it on there in the comments in a few, a few minutes ago. She wrote that singing the All of Us movement from considering Matthew Shepard with the chorus of Westerly was an unforgettable experience. And we just sang that little short little section uh, and I believe, I'm, I can't remember exactly, but I think some of our teenage girls sang some of the solo parts that you sang originally. Mm-hmm. And, but just at, at these these young women who saw you sing Dvorak and saw you sing this here and this all happening, boy, it's gosh darn inspiring. And so, I mean, really to you and everyone involved with this, God bless you and thank you. Cause it really is, mm-hmm. it's important. Um, well, and, and Lorelai says this too, just, for like the young singers who might be watching, um, we always say this that the the professional choral world in the states has really exploded in the last twenty years, and it's really meant something different for studying voice. Um, uh, you're just because of all these new ways of making music professionally as a singer, you're required to just do a lot more, and it's so much fun to be able to do all of these different styles. Um, so yeah, just be good at anything. Like if, if you're a good R&B singer, there is, and you're like, I shouldn't do that. I, I, I went through, I had a voice teacher who was like, I have to do opera, I have to do opera, I have to do opera. And I was like, but there's so many things I like. Um, <laughs> be good at it all and just whatever you're especially naturally drawn to, it's gonna pay off if you keep if you keep enriching that for yourself. Um, yeah, I was gonna say one other thing about oh, um, the all of us is uh, that that chorus. Um, I I've had so many different feelings singing that one, but the last one I had, it it's such like a battle song, you know, like this is your battle song, you know, it's um just a real sense of like empowerment and like this is what we have to do together um so yeah i i i kind of described it to myself very differently throughout the years but that was that's been the last thing that really stuck with me singing that movement it's it's just it is just incredible go ahead Kevin. i was gonna say you should everyone who's watching should check out this PBS special and check in at, at mile marker 50 and you will see the power that Sonia is talking about. It is just a stunning performance. And you, you since you performed it, you should relive the magic. It's such a journey to go on that. Uh, and I don't know if I don't know how you guys did it when you did the, the chorus for the for the Bach chorale. Yeah. Did everyone do it in the audience? No. No, okay. But so, and I, I wasn't sure kind of, and how this gets passed along, what happens, but so in every performance, yeah, Consbrari invites local choirs to be in the audience and sing that Bach chorale, stand up in the audience. Oh. It's like a flash mob. Yeah. So one by one, people just sprinkle up, stand up and sing it. So you, the audience is surrounded by that Bach chorale. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I'm calling it a Bach chorale. It's not, but it's, it, well, actually, no, it's, it's, it's yeah. like it. Yeah, no, it's so right. very apt. To, to be yeah. on the stage and to see, you know, we've had 500 people at the Ravinia Festival and at Symphony mm. Hall. We had 500 people stand up and sing that at us. And every time I'm getting, <laughs> it's happening right now. I just get huge goosebumps everywhere. It's so powerful. And it just, it, that's part of what makes it feel like a battle song. Yeah. So I think like, so when we did, so obviously we didn't, we didn't have, I mean, our whole only seats for 50. 
but you also have 200 people singing at you, you know, coming at you. <laughs> yeah. and, and in my end, I have been, so I mean, I get to listen to rehearsals down the hall in my little office. And so, and I, and I had, it was, a, I had listened to it through, but I hadn't actually felt it live until I went upstairs for one of the rehearsals right before the show with no one else in there. And the hall was, was totally empty. And the way, you know, we always joke the chorus, we call it the wall of sound. But when it hit that corral and I was just standing there and it just, and I think it's the same way with the audience. It just, it sort of hits you. But anyways, we keep talking about the divorce act, but when it cuts in the last movement to the quando corpus, the, and then that, that, that big, the paradis di gloria, it's just like, it, and it's, it's brilliant. It's like everything else stops except for the human voice and it's just coming, coming at you. And then, it's the same thing. It's yeah. that beam. It's, it's a very, it, it's strikingly powerful. And I, and I think it has, we were talking before the show started, how that outside the chorus hall, we put up a banner that actually steals a line from that last moment, which is rise to sing again, which is sort of, if you talk about a little bit of a, a battle song or a battle cry, it's just this like, we are, we can do this. If I could have put that entire movement on the kiosk, I would have put that entire movement on the kiosk. This is a lot of words, but. Sure. No, that's an incredibly powerful phrase. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. But we have some time. We have some time left. So if anyone else there is watching and you have questions, uh, you can put them in the chat function. We can see the comments uh, in the, that are popping up there. So and uh, we know that you're many of you are watching and, and reliving a lot of this with us. So if you do have a question, feel free uh, to put it in the comments and we'll ask it. Um, Catherine, do you have other things you'd like to go through? I, you know what? I'm going to get the general interest ball rolling here. So. Um, <laughs> You know, we, we have our sights set on, on touring when it's safe to do so again. And um, I'm wondering if you have any pre-concert rituals or um, tricks yes. that you use when you're traveling to, to stay vocally healthy and, and that sort of thing. Things you wish they taught you in college. <laughs> oh my gosh, I feel like I'm insane, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. Fancy bronze. I, like I feel like I'm a crazy person. Um, yeah, because I, I also want to say I had voice surgery in 2000. Uh, oh my gosh. I don't know, 12 or something wow. like that. Actually, it was right after the divorce act. Sorry. No, 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 no. It was scheduled. I was, okay. like, I was like, that was the last thing I was going to do, and I'm going to have voice surgery. And I think people, singers, need to talk about that stuff more because it's completely normal. It happens, vocal injuries happen for so many, so many reasons. Yeah. There's a lot um, of stigma. A lot of stigma. And so I love telling people that I <laughs> had surgery. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, so I think just because of that, I'm, I'm, that's why I'm a crazy person. So I always travel with my like humidifier, um, my antacids. Um, oh, oh, there's like, it, the list is, just goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, I don't even, there's not even like one thing. <laughs> just all um, the things. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, so vocal massage is, is a really great thing that often I never learned about vocal massage. Um, I'm happy to do sessions with anyone who wants to learn more about it. Um, yeah, the vocal, what do they call them? Singer mist. It's oh yeah. Like a nebulizer for singers. Um, really? Well, singers use them. That is magic. Um, that's a new discovery that I wow. highly recommend. Wow. Um, but I mean, everything else, it's such a meditating game. Mm. Singing is, it's so mental. Mm. The weeds we have to go through sometimes, it's, it's thick. And, and you, never know what you're walk, you, what? you never know what you're walking into in some cases either, right? You get a gig and, and you, what's it going to be? Are you going to end up, are you going to end up meeting um, somebody like this? Hey, uh, Dave, call up the picture of uh, Mike Freitas and uh, Sonia and me. Yeah, I mean, give me give the guys to greet you. I mean, you could ask to be housed with the guy. That's, That's guy. amazing. Um, you never know what you're going to find. You never know what you're going to find at the other end of that rainbow. All right, we have, a, we have a question. We have a question okay. for you. This is coming from Stevie Blanchett. I remember, uh, try to remember. What would you like to sing with us next, Sonia? Plan your concert with us. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's such a big question. 
I don't even know. I mean, we got plenty of time to figure it out, it seems. <laughs> these days, so. Oh my gosh. I don't even, I don't even, I don't, I'm the worst person, Stevie, I'm the worst person to ask that question to. So, I don't, I should keep this just running file in my head about all the stuff I want to do, but it's just too much. Is there anything on your bucket list? So what would you like to sing? It is keeps there... changing is the thing. But well, that's fine. Um, What's at the top right now? See, it's funny. We think so differently in these quarantine COVID we times. We sure do. It's... <laughs> well, truth, truth be told, I'm actually really in... Um, I'm learning a ton about spirituals. And so this is maybe not something I would sing with with you, Stevie, or Chorus Westerly, um, unless we can make some really great arrangements. But um, I'm learning so much about them and singing them as a non-black person. And um, it's just been a total eye-opener. I'm learning so much about music just by, st I, that's a horrible thing to say. Um, but just it, if you prepare a spiritual the way you should, it can feed so many incredible things into all your other repertoire. And so just learning over the summer that the overwhelming majority of black scholars, black musicians, black singers say, yes, non-black people need to sing these songs. Since I learned that and heard that from so many people, I really started delving into them. And um, now it's it's what I'm going to start all of my voice students on. Wow. Always. And I've started singing them at the start of my practice sessions. Um, Jonathan and I are going to sing some for Shelter Music Boston. If you don't know about them, they perform music for homeless shelters mm -hmm. and they're doing virtual performances. So we're going to sing, do some spirituals for that performance. Um, that's kind of the route I'm on now. Yeah. Well, that's okay. We but can... I would love to do a big, like, Oh God, to sing with you guys in an orchestra again. I mean, Messiah, why not? It's like, there's a reason everybody always does that piece. It's incredible. <laughs> there's a reason it's a standard. Um, St. Matthew Passion, that's what I want to do. <gasps> oh, well, you know what? We have never done St. Matthew Passion. Can you believe that? Okay, never. well, let's do that, please. Never. You know, the, you know what? one of the reasons we've never done it? It's long. Um, and I'm not saying- It's so long. It's long, so you gotta figure out what to, how to handle it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in our, cause you've been to our hall. Our hall's not very big. We have no place to put people, so you probably have to do it in a couple of halves and send everybody up for lunch and have them come back or something like that. So we've never done. In fact, the chorus of Westerly has never done any of the passions. We haven't done um, any of the Bach passions. No. Yeah, uh, we, okay. So there well, we can. That, that's good. I hope Andrew is tuned in somewhere. So uh, Pam Young wonder. Pam Young wonders if you come and sing on Summer Pops. That's uh Yes. I loved it. <laughs> I'm so excited about that. I got I sang I sang Heart uh, with Hartford Symphony a couple years ago for their summer stuff and I got to do um Let the Sky Fall. Let it I got to do Wow, that right, that is number um, one. I can cook too. I love doing a crossover stuff. That's so much fun. I think that I think we got a book. I mean, John's played in the orchestra with us. I think he had the car yeah. horn one year when we did this or that. And then you and Emily Marbar yeah. sat out there. But Sonia yeah. has been Sonia has and when we did Twelfth Night, we made you the queen a couple of times, I think, yes. or up there. So uh I like the <gasps> summer pop idea. Look, there's John and Sony right there. And there's Oh, a, there we are. Uh that's okay. That's a good one. I like summer summer pops. Summer pops. I like you. it. Okay. I just wanted to I brought this, I had to show it. Speaking That's of queen and like crowning myself, I will now crown myself again with this. It's actually by my bed. I, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Dave, do you have I'm... a picture of her when she got it? I think you have that picture too. <laughs> that's when she actually got it. That's awesome. Such that's a genuine awesome. smile. There's nothing oh. better. Well, that was, she got it early because Sonia had to leave on the tour. We had finished Sweet. the concert. We sang a, an amazing concert. Uh, the Paris did in the Matthias Church, and it was in the comments earlier from Pam Young. But one thing that the, that made such an impression on the chorus of Westerly members was uh, the the so you were the soloist with Emily Marbosch and Dan Weeks and Jeremy Gallion, and in rehearsal in the Matthias Church in Budapest, um, you all turned around and sang at them in the 
yeah, it, it just that was so powerful. Yeah, they. I mean, just to yeah, just to make music as a circle. Yeah, it, um, I yeah, when when you started talking about, this, I was like, I know what he's gonna say. It, it was it was with me. It was something to watch. I mean, it was really, uh, it was really, it was, we find ourselves, we may joke about Prague and shrimp and all these things, but um, in, when we were in Smetna Hall, I don't know if I ever told you this. Um, we, we, of course, we had a very large crowd there, which we didn't expect. And I was nice. way, 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 way in the back. And I was with the um, owner of the Prague concert company who was in charge of promoting us and doing everything for us in Prague. At the end of it, he got up and he said to me, he goes, that was a good quartet. Good job. That's all he said. And he walked away and we saw him later at dinner. But he, he that was his first comment out. Like he was, I, and I was like, well, there you go. That's pretty high praise coming out of Prague. It was such, I mean, just such good humans too. Yeah. That was a great quartet to be a part of. But we're we're so we're so glad that you uh, have had a chance to do all this stuff with us. And um, I, I'm before, the glad one for before, sure. Before we, um, I mean, before we're, we've gotten to the end of our hour here, if anyone has any final questions, please put it in there. But um, I, I do, I do want you to know, honestly, on behalf of all of us, the chorus, really, uh, how much we've appreciated all that you've given us. Because I know also from the parents of some of our younger singers, uh, how much time um, you've given to them, and also when you have been with us in concerts um, or at rehearsals, you know, you talk to the kids. They interact with you. There are members in, inside of the chorus of Westerly, kids who are now teenagers, who were little kids when you first started, very, very, very little kids, mm -hmm. who look at you as a rock star, their rock star, but also kind of brag that, oh, I know Sonia, like, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of deal. And that that is really um, special, because I think someday we're going to get one of those kids up there in that risers that'll go on to have a career maybe similar to yours, maybe different. Um, that mm -hmm. could do one of these interviews and talk about, I really do believe that. And I think, um, I, I just wanted to say thank you for all that you've done for the chorus of Westerly and all our kids and all of our members, because frankly, we consider you part of the family um, and, uh, and and Marbosh and all, all the Laura ladies we've had come down with us and all of our mm -hmm. soloists. I mean, the, the soloists that we have come with us and even in our orchestras too, you know, like the, you bring us up to that A game, you know, like having, having you there makes us feel like we're special and important. Yeah. And um, it's nice. So, thank you. Thank you for, thank you for doing this. Um, Catherine, did you have any final questions? Just, I just want to echo the sentiment that um, just having known you over the years um, to uh, everyone who's watching, she's the real deal there. She's as, <laughs> as authentic as they come and you should check out her, her website and beyond artists and, um, Check out that calendar. She's still making music even in this crazy time. I, which reminds me, I, I have to update my calendar. Update your calendar. I'm not at all accurate. So thanks, Beyond Matthew. Artist, Mothers Out Front, Lorelei Ensemble, <laughs> Ferrari. Well, uh, and just for the record, I will do anything to support Chorus of Westerly. Um, and you guys just have to continue for another, how many years have you been? Six. This is their sixty-second yeah. season. So yeah, another sixty-two mm -hmm. years. Yeah. It has and Andrew has to stay on as music director for at least forty-nine more, I think, if he wants to catch George. Yeah. So. Okay. Great. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> I'm in. Sounds good. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, Sonia, so very much for joining us. It's it's thank always you, it guys. is it's always a treat to talk to you. It's it's wonderful to see your face. Um, and my best wishes to you and to to John and to Soren, everybody and everyone in your family. Uh, for a healthy fall and hopefully we're back to music making soon. I'm looking forward to whenever it can happen. I know Lorelai has a big commission with Julia Wolf that will eventually come to be, but it's been put on hold because of all of this. Yes. Uh, but there's lots of great stuff happening. And it says as Sandy Niles just wrote in the comments, we are truly blessed to know you, Sonia. So mm -hmm. thank you so very much. Uh, and Catherine, thank you for joining us tonight too. And to everyone out there uh, and the internet, thank you for joining us. Uh, again, if you'd like to watch this on demand or at any point in time, you can go to the Chorus of Westerly's YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, 
that's youtube.com and just google for it westerly and we should show up there's lots of things on there uh right now as we keep putting stuff new content and this weekend we're going to drop a brand new show called the community chorus show with our very first guests on the show of mike freitas amy blanchett and andrew Ledestri. That should be different from this one, uh, and maybe so. That's going to start. That's already been. That's uh, that's been taped as if it were live. So magically, my hair might grow out for that concert. That that show, but that's on the YouTube channel. And if you go back in the comments, you can find the links to the PBS special on considering Matthew Shepard and the the highlight show from Conspirare. And do give a, a look out to some of these websites too. Uh, and if you can make donations to any of these wonderful arts or activist ensemble uh, activist organizations please do they can always use your help in these points in times or the chorus of westerly too again sonia thank you so very much for joining us catherine thank you very much next Thanks, week jay murray for the embodied singer oboist and licensed body mapping educator jay murray is at the faculty of the university of rhode island a great oboe player and our orchestra contractor so we're going to be talking about the embodied singer and body mapping with jane murray next week live on this channel at 7 p.m. So with that, good night, friends, and we'll see you in a week. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night.